welcome back into the studio. Actually doing a bit of a different video today. Normally you see a blank panel as I start a video and watch me build up the layers and create to a final piece. But today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm actually taking an existing painting and I'm gonna rework it and I wanna share it with you and I wanna slow the process down and not just speed through it. So you can really see what I do and also I can share with you a little bit of what I'm thinking and why I'm doing it. So this is a painting that I did last year. It's part of the Celia collection. And I liked it when I did it, when I finished it, but as I've been looking at it, and seeing it hanging on the wall in the studio, I really feel like it needs a bit more drama, Le needs a little bit more pizzazz. It's a lot of um, the same tones um, and really gentle hues, which can be beautiful, but I want this piece to have a little bit more pop to it. So we're gonna rework it. And the way I'm gonna do that is I have to start by taking off the finish that I put on that I have shared. I do two coats of a varnish to protect from UV and dust, and I need to remove that. Um, and I'm gonna just do it in the areas I'm gonna rework. So the areas I'm looking at is this. This area right in here, I want this to be dark. I want it to ground the piece, this is the bottom. So I really want this to feel heavy. So we're gonna go with a dark color down here in the color palette of the Celia work. And so this is gonna get to be kind of a, a dark charcoal is really what we're looking at here. And it's gonna appear very dramatic as we make this change before we get to the next step. So this is going to look really odd as I bring this together, but trust me, I have reworked pieces and we can do this. Um, we're just gonna step through it one step at a time and we're gonna take it through the ugly phases to bring it out the other side. The other place I wanna work is right in here. I don't want this to be a mustard color. If you look up here, this has a little bit more of like a peach tone. So I wanna bring that peach paint right through here, push back that mustard kind of color that's here because I want that mustard color. This, by the way, is a strip of collaged paper and this I don't wanna to touch. I wanna to leave that. And I want this mustard area to really stand out. So in order for that to happen, I wanna get rid of the mustard here and that's why I'm going dark here. So we're gonna add a little bit of peach and then we're gonna get a little bit of color depth in that when we add the pastel on a previous, no, on a later step, not a previous step, we're gonna do paint first. So the first thing is take sandpaper and I'm just gonna lightly go over these areas to remove that varnish and just give it a little bit of tooth. It doesn't take a lot because this mineral paint will stick really easily to the surface again. So I'm gonna work on that and you're gonna watch that process sped up a bit. Okay, now that I have finished the sanding and wiped that off, you probably noticed that I only sanded the areas where I am gonna add paint. I didn't take the varnish off of the collage paper and I'm not taking it off of what's up here on the top. And that's because those areas I'm not looking to rework. So as we do this and I add the paint, the mineral paint is very flat. And these, these two sections are gonna look like they won't end up blending in and creating a cohesive piece, but we will get there. 
and it will come when the varnish gets added at the end. So it's going to take a process, but we're gonna walk through that together. So let's get this dark part started. I have some of the brown black that comes with the Tommy Art. This is a pre-mixed, I haven't done anything with this one. And then I have created a custom color here in an empty jar that I'm just referring to as dark gray. And it's uh, on its last legs <laughs> because I did mix all this up for paint last year, um, but I'm able to kind of revitalize that and we're, we're gonna use it. It's gonna be a little thicker, a little chunkier, but we'll make it work. So let's start laying this down. And I am gonna start with this black brown. And this, like I said, is going to be very stark. And to be able to spread it, I typically have water and use a water bottle all the time because the paint is really thick naturally. And then the mixed paint that I get after it's been mixed a while will be even more um, thick. So adding that water just lets me blend it. If you see chunks in there, that is just because this is a custom mixed color and it's it's old, it's starting to dry out. The paint itself, um, when you buy it, is not like that. So I am just looking to blend this and get kind of a mixture of the two that's gonna go across here. And once I get done doing it this way, I will come in with my favorite tool to get paint to spread. And you know, there's areas in here where you can see that kind of gold from underneath popping through. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna let that be part of the, there's a story buried underneath this layer and go with it. So I'm gonna come in with my favorite tool, my finger and just get that paint spread right up to the edge of that paper. And then I'm gonna come in with my second favorite tool and I'm gonna wipe back anything that gets up on that paper that I don't, I just don't want it there. Just gonna even out. Sometimes my finger does a better job at blending than the tools themselves. But you can start to see how this changing the bottom already has changed how the piece looks. It's defined it more. You definitely get this grounding at the bottom. And more importantly, the angles that I cut this whole collection is all about that kind of angled design. And with the previous layer, yeah, it was there when you really looked at it, but now you can really see that diagonal cut across, which really helps your eye move through the painting. And this collaged paper, which I love the texture of it and how it has the different colors layered in there, it stands out so much more. And it's gonna do it even more once we work on the top part. So just a little more evening out. And sometimes the best way of doing it is just to come in with a little bit of water. Let that glide through. but I like the variants. We will be adding pastel to this. I'm so excited to share that process with you as well. And that's gonna create even more of the color depth and give us a little bit more variance as we play around with the different pastels that we can go in with. So I'm gonna grab my next favorite tool and now we're gonna make sure to kind of clean up the edges. Okay, baby wipe. I cannot create without these. So I'm just gonna come in here 
And the nice thing with wiping this back off for anything that I don't want up on the paper is the paper layer still has the varnish on it. And because of that, it's super, it's easy to wipe off, which is why I varnish so that any of the finished pieces coming from the studio, you can always dust. When they're hanging in your home, you need to be able to clean these. You don't want something that is a dust collector. So the varnish allows you to wipe it off, just a wet rag and remove anything that might get on there and you're never gonna ruin the painting. And that's what I'm doing right now, is just taking paint, pushing it back off of that paper and then smoothing out some areas. I need a little more paint up here. There we go. Now I didn't tape off the edges again, as I typically do with a panel when I start, because these edges I actually painted instead of leaving them natural. So I just decided to, I was excited to rework it really. I just didn't want to take the time to tape it. That's really the reason. Best thing to do would be to tape it again, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna wipe it off and I might have to touch up the paint that I used to paint these edges. Got that cleaned up, already loving it. Don't even have the pastel on, not even dry, haven't fixed this and already, I like this piece a hundred times more. <laughs> so I love when that happens. Um, sometimes you have to sit with it. Just got to stare at it. In my case, I had to stare at it for nine months and um, then it came to me. <laughs> you know. Okay, now we're going to add in the peach paint. One's also going to go on a little chunky. That's okay. Get it spread out. And remember, these chunks that you're seeing is because I have mixed this paint and it's old. It's actually been mixed a couple years ago when I first began painting some pieces in this collection. So I'm pushing the edge of its... Uh, <laughs> mixed up lifespan but get it blended in now can you see already haven't blended it looks kind of a mess up there but you're starting to see where this is also going to define that line of the paper and while there are little areas in here that have the peach when we put the pastel on this peach, we're gonna go drama. We're gonna go a little orangey yellow in it as well. So it really will stand out from this. And then we're gonna gradually put that and blend that into this top part, which we are not gonna touch with paint and I haven't taken the varnish off, but we will tie this all through together. So I'm gonna keep putting this on and we're gonna see how it balances it out. And I'm going to come in with some water to kind of help move that paint and it allows me to kind of blend it because again I'm trying to get rid of you can see this kind of mustardy yellow I am really going to push that back I'm going to let this peach paint kind of blend in with it you'll still see parts of it it'll still be there we may even add a little mustard yellow pastel over this to kind of blend it in but I really want to push that back because I want this more peach color to come through right here.
I'd be curious before you finish the video, if you uh, share your thoughts, like, do you like how it's looking? Do you like where it's going? Did you like how it was before? And you're like, no, Jackie, what are you doing? I loved it before. Um, because I'm just curious. Everybody has a different reaction. Everybody has a different connection um, to color and to how I balance the color on a painting. So it's fascinating for me to hear how other people see the work that I do and their reaction to it. So anyway, share with me, let me know. Do you like where it's happening as we're not even all the way through this process? Because it will change when we add the pastel. All right, I'm gonna let some of this paint color overflow. I'm not gonna do such a hard line like I did down here. Oh, I'm really loving down here. Um, I am gonna let this kind of blend there because there was this dark moment happening on the paper and I wanna kind of push that back. So we're gonna let this paint sit over here. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more water up here Now, as I'm working on this, I'm also thinking um, your thoughts on, do you like seeing the process or do you just like the videos where set it to music, paint a piece and you can just relax and watch it come together? Or do you like this seeing the process, slowing it down a little, letting me talk to you and sharing my thoughts? So I'm curious on that too because this is kind of like you're here in the studio with me, which is a lot more fun for me than being in here all by myself. And it's an excuse. I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to you guys. So, you know, on a typical day, I might be in here talking to myself, but not today. All right, we're gonna see how this dries out. It's gotten a little wet and I think I wanna pull back a little bit. Just kind of let that blend, but you can see how wet it is. And so it's a little hard to get it to, to blend, but sometimes that can create its own interesting texture. But that's where patience can be a good thing, which I don't have a lot of. So typically I might force this dry, but I think I'm gonna let it sit. We're all gonna have to just be patient and wait. Oh yeah, I'm stepping back now, which you can't see, but I really like that. I like it a lot, a lot more. So the other thing I'm noticing as I'm looking at this is I know what I can do with the pastel. I know how I can blend and how I can really create some good color depth with it. But I also know that one of the limitations with it is if I start getting a harder line here, you can kind of see where the paint um, is a little thicker, so it's more opaque. And if I let that be a really solid line, I can't really blend that later with pastel um, as easily. So I know that I wanna come in here, I wanna soften that. I really want this to look like it's blended. So I don't want some of that hard line. There's one of those. So, and I certainly don't want it to be straight across. I wanna look like it's kind of blended in. So we're gonna just kind of massage this. We're gonna keep playing with it. I may even be speeding up this process so you don't have to watch me keep futzing with it because this is one of the reasons why I speed up my videos because it's just me looking at it, taking a look, backing up, adding, moving, moving the paint and it's a process that sometimes when it's not sped up, might get incredibly boring to somebody who's just watching.
Okay, remember how I said I wasn't gonna force dry? Yeah, well, I lied. I need to get this a little bit drier so that I can do that blending and I can make sure that it's not gonna dry with hard lines. So we're just gonna do a little. This is just a heat tool. Always keep it moving. The one thing that you can do with this heat tool with the mineral paint is you can crack it, like crackle it, like intentionally. Um, and I don't want that look for this piece. So I'm wanting to make sure to keep the drying moving. And I also don't want to dry it completely. I'm just trying to reduce the amount of water that's going on. There we go. Now it's not just in constant motion. Yeah, this is still a little bit wet here, so you can really see that when I move it, it moves a lot, and it also just kind of drags across, whereas this down here, it's like a gentle blend, and that's what I'm going for. I just want it movable, and that's it. I don't want it super wet. And now I am happy with that. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna let it fully dry. And if I don't care for how it's dried, we'll just come back in and add some more paint. Not a problem, but yeah. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take a break. The video will end up continuing for you, but let me know. Let me know what you think of this and the change from what we started with 20 some minutes ago and where we are right now. Okay, I said that I was gonna share every step of the process on this one. And unfortunately, I started working on adding the pastel and did not hit record. So I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of what I did um, and then we're gonna keep working on it together. So you will get to see this step of the process. So these are, when I talk about pastel that I use, I use pan pastels. And they're, they're called that and they're made by Pan Pastel. And they are just, they're powdery, um, as you can see. And I don't typically put them on with my fingers. Um, but I use these soft um, applique brushes to put them on. And what I'm doing, you can probably see here, <laughs> is the video probably will jump forward from the painting, but I've been adding on because again, I had talked about, I wanted to move away from this mustard color in here, which is why we added the peach paint. And now I'm just kind of blending through to get a, a really fun texture. Um, color texture is the best way to say that. I love to create that depth with different color. And so I'm just coming in here and I'm trying to blend it because you can see how this gets a lot lighter up here. So I'm just, you know, just blending it a little bit um, and working on that just a little. Not too concerned uh, with it looking exactly like the top part. Um, but what I'm really looking to do is to come in here with this brighter, um, orange, kind of peachy, like deeper peach colored. Um, and here I am getting powder all over that. We'll fix that later. So I'm really gonna come in with this color. And you don't need a lot of it because this is very bright. But I'm just gonna spread it here and it's gonna look really intense and maybe a little bit dramatic in the beginning. but it will get blended in and it's giving me that, the color that I'm really looking for, which is more of an orangey peach getting away from the yellow because I want this mustard to stay as part of that collaged paper, but I want it to stand out more. I want you to really be able to see it. So now I'm gonna come in with this and just start kind of blending that in, 
because while I do want it to be a little bit bolder, I do want it to kind of uh, match into that background. So I'm just looking to come in and you can keep layering. These can just get layered um, and, and they will affect one another. I can keep moving it around. I can also come in um, which is what I do at the end. But if I want to set that layer and keep building it with the pastel, I can do that because I can come in with this fixative, spray it, let it fully dry. And this is a non-aerosol non -aerosol <laughs> version of fixative. So I can spray this indoors. Um, and as soon as that dries, then I can start building up layers and the layers underneath won't be affected because they'll be fixed. Um, and so I'll just be building layers up. So that's also an option, but not one I'm gonna use on this because I don't need to do that many pastel layers. I'm not trying to build it up that much. So it doesn't take a lot. I've had a lot of these for years, years and years, and I teach classes and my students use these. So um, yeah, these palettes, the, I mean, these um, pastels <laughs> last a very, very long time because you just don't need that much as I just blend it through. And if I don't like how something's looking, like this in here, eh, it's a little much for me. If I can't really blend it out with my finger or with the applique, you can come in um, with a rag or a baby wipe. And um, for the way I use pastel, adding moisture to it isn't a bad thing, which is how we'll clean this up. Um, but typically, <laughs> for people who paint with pastels, they would never want to add water. But I am really looking for it to add texture, and I just didn't like how stark that was. So we're just gonna take that out. You can just kind of blend it in, let that dry, and then I can keep uh, blending it in. The most important thing with the pastels is really letting, making sure that there isn't anything wet on here before you start using the application um, tool and especially before you put it in here because you don't want to get the powder itself wet. So you just wanna make sure that everything is dry before you would to start adding a new layer. So this is already dry because that wasn't too wet. So I'm just gonna keep blending and probably at this point, you're not going to hear me talking because I'm going to be fast forwarding through a lot of this so that you can just see what I'm doing and what I'm looking to add in here. So here again, there's a little bit of texture. I don't really want that. So um, some of this is I'm coming up against where I actually put the new paint down and where the old area was. So um, that is also part of what is going on, but just keep adding in. I might bring in an even lighter version. And I'm just gonna keep blending layers until I get to a point where I am happy. In this area, I am getting some lines I don't like. So I'm just gonna come back in with my sandpaper and I'm just gonna make sure that I rough that up enough that it will accept the pastel to kind of let me blend it into the above area. dry and then we're going to work to blend all that together 
And while I'm waiting for that to kind of dry, I'm gonna come and focus down here. And this, I'm just gonna to look to create a little bit more um, light and dark. Just see how it kind of brings in a new layer of color and dimension um, and richness. Just following right along on that paper line. And now I'm going to come in with just a little bit darker of a gray and blend that into what's happening below it. And it didn't change the color a lot down here, but the intensity, which sometimes doesn't get picked up on the video as much as it is in, in person, but I can see the variance and the intensity um, change as I add the pastel over the top of those layers of mineral paint. And I know that when I seal it, I'm gonna really get those layers to show through so you're going to see some real depth in here and it won't look so flat. So I just really want to come in and try not to have too many hard lines here. Just kind of blend it through. how this texture is coming through and how this is looking. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now flip this back around and I'll go in here with this lighter we're gonna work to blend this. Yeah, that's catching it a little bit better. Yep, that's gonna allow me to blend just as I want, just to kind of bridge this area into this area. I don't want it to be too harsh of a line and it just needed a little tooth, something to stick to, since I didn't really redo the paint in this area. Not a problem when you're painting for the first time, just a problem when you're reworking, and I don't wanna rework the whole thing. Because like I said, I was really, I love how this was, and I really like the softness up here. It was just these two areas that just needed a little bit of work, pulling something different out of them. So I'm just going to keep blending this and I will fast forward through this and we will get to the next step together.
just wiping off the pastel that got on the collaged paper here. Give it a little bit more of a definitive line. Just push that back just a little bit. Go in and blend that in again. And as I'm looking at this, originally down in this section that was too light, it had some gold, had a little shimmer. It was actually gold paint because that's part of this um, collection, the Celia collection, had gold in it. And I think what I want to do, I have these two different gold, get all the stuff off of it but these two different gold uh, pastels one is light gold and one is called rich gold and I don't think the light gold is going to do a lot but I want to come in here which one I had there and just see about bringing it in right along here as part of that blending in and see if I can catch the edge yeah we're going to do it with a clean one. So I think I'm getting a little bit of that orange and I'm not wanting that. <sighs> Tends to <sighs> get dust on it. <laughs> Powder dust. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna just come in with this and I might actually blend it out with that lighter gold. But this will just give it a little shimmer. <laughs> And you'll notice I don't change my application um, sponge. Um, I'm not sure if that's what they're called. That's what I call them. Um, I don't change it very often when I'm working in the same tones. Um, that's just my preference. Obviously, if you are one to really wanna keep your colors separate inside here because you can transfer, um, you would obviously not want to do that. So you can see here, <laughs> I used, I applied this and there was something dark on there on the, the application tool itself. Yeah, you can blow that off or make it add to the layer. I'm not really fussy about it because I'm not trying to do precise color. I'm really getting mixes, so... Um, plus, to be honest, I'm a little lazy and I don't want to keep swapping out uh, these little application pads, sponges. So if you get build up, you can just blow it off, which is easier because if you use your hand to scrape it, it will, um, of course, blend in. So then all this gold that is coming in here would end up showing up down here, which is really not what I want because I just spent a lot of time getting rid of the gold down there. So now I'm just using this to kind of blend it out because I kind of, I like the shimmer, which will show up more once it is sealed. And I am sure it is not showing up on video because you have to move around. And let the light catch it. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. So that's really giving me this line that I'm looking for because it's accentuating that angle. And that's what I wanted. This piece, uh, the Celia collection is all about angles. And um, this one was kind of lost because it just blended in when we started. But now you can really see the angle here and here. Um, it's a lot more defined and that's exactly what I was going for. So I am really um, happy with how this rework has gone. So once again, I'm just going to blend a bit more of this. You'll see this in fast forward and then we will go to the next step.
we are now ready to go to the next step. And as you can see, I've cleared the space because the next step is to spray the fixative. And you wanna do it in really even coats, quickly across, thinly across the surface. So I'm gonna overspray, so I don't want to have my pastels and my tools out on the side while I do this. So here we go. Now you can see it's wet because this got sprayed down. You can see how the intensity of that color comes through when it's wet. That's what it will look like when I get the varnish put on it as well. So it's really going to pop. But now this has to sit for, I usually let it sit for a couple of days actually and really let that um, fixative cure on there before I begin uh, putting on the next layers. So for you, it'll be instant. For me, I will see you back here at the table um, in a couple of days. Hey, it has been just a couple of seconds for you, but a couple of days for me to really let the pastel and the fixative set. Um, and I wanna share with you, before we get started in the sealing process, of the tools that I use. So my first up is Liquitex Varnish. Uh, this I have found is a really great product. It is a water base. It is liquid, um, which we'll talk through some of the pluses and minuses of that. Um, but I use the satin finish when I do my pieces. Um, and then here I have it in a container and I like to have the brush sit in there and kind of soak it up a little bit before I begin so that this brush is well saturated. And this is just one of those really inexpensive foam craft brushes. I purchased this brush, which is actually a varnish finishing brush, um, thinking that this would be the best thing to, to use to apply this. And what I found was, <laughs> that this caused me a lot of frustration. A lot of bristle marks were left in it. Um, I have to move quickly, which we'll talk about in just a second. And this just didn't soak it up. It didn't, when I work on bigger pieces, it didn't allow me to swipe clear across the piece. So I have it, um, but I really do not like using this. I have found that this nice inexpensive tool works really well for me. So now let's talk about my process and how I do this. There's one part of this process that's a little, um, I won't say complicated, but it's taken me some practice to get used to it. So as you remember, I put the pastel on and then used this fixative to um, set it. And this is a water-based fixative that I can spray indoors. Because of that, it can get reactivated when I go over the top of it. Um, and I have tried other fixatives, um, but they can also get gummy if they're not, uh, if they're more of an aerosol base. So for me, this works. But what it does mean is I can't keep going over and going over an area. I have to wipe it on and let it sit and dry. And I put that first coat on very quickly and without a lot of fuss, sometimes there's a little bit of areas that don't get hit and sometimes I'll delicately go back in with the just the tip of the brush here and put it, um, you know, fill it in. And then I just walk away and let it set. Um, and then I will come back and when I put the next layers on, then nothing moves. So it's really easy to just add layers. I usually have about three varnish layers when I'm done because I will go with we'll call it the grain of the painting, since I tend to you know, move the paint and the pastel from left to right, right to left. Um, but then on the second coat, I tend to go in um, from the top to the bottom with the varnish to really let it sink in because we've got all these little ridges. And sometimes if I only go back and forth, you're not gonna make sure those ridges are really covered that way and then I will keep brushing it back and forth. 
So here we go on the first coat. I have not done this while recording, so I will likely put some music to this because I will not be able to talk while I am focused on this. So I'm gonna make sure it's really loaded up. Um, and again, if you'll remember, we just have this area and this area that has nothing on it. The paper, the collaged painted paper here still does have some varnish and the top part here has varnish because I didn't sand that down nor paint over the top of it. So I'm really focused on this first coat to just getting these zones that have nothing. And then on the next coat, I will blend it all in with the entire painting. So I always try and hit the lighter areas first because it is possible that I will pick up some dark from here. And if that happens on my brush, I will wipe it off on a rag. Oh, look at what I just did. <laughs> Um, I will wipe, wipe it off on a rag before I put it in uh, back in here to not contaminate it. Um, but I like to start in the lighter areas first on this first coat. Again, it's just this first coat that's a little fussy. So we'll see how this goes. And I'm going to start right down here and do a swath across and then I'll come up here and I'm going to do another one. And that's it. I'm not going to fuss with it. There are air bubbles that get in it. Right now, I'm not concerned with that. I will go and either spray a little bit of a heat or I'll blow on it to get those to go away. But right now, I'm just going to get... Yeah, see, I can't talk while I'm doing it. Um, right now, I'm just going to get these layers. It's going to look a little odd. It might look a little you know, heavier in some areas, it will balance out. I've done it enough that I have confidence in that completely. So I'm just gonna check. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more swath. So there is just a little bit up here. So we're gonna go over one more time. There we go. Now I'm done with up there. I'm not gonna futz with it. I say that, but there, mm -hmm. Yeah, that wasn't the greatest path this way, but I have to leave it. So we will see how that all turns out on the next coat. So now I'm gonna come down in here and do this. And this you can probably see standing out. I did not get, I don't see any color on there, so that's really good. Um, letting that fixative sit for days, I have learned, really does help. And moving quickly. Not fussing too much with this layer. This is going to pick some up. Can you see that? Because I went over the top of it again. It's fine. It has not ruined it. But that's what I do not want to put back in to this clean. So I will make sure to wipe off. Though I am done with this layer right now, and if you if it's picking up on the camera, there are it is a little gloppy. There's little areas. It's not a perfect thing, but this is really just looking to kind of set in the fixative with that pastel. When I come back through on the next layer, I'm going to be able to even that all out, and it's going to look great. So now we wait. Okay, that first coat of varnish uh, is now dry. So I'm gonna come in with this second coat. And on this one, I am gonna come down the piece. So I am gonna put some varnish over areas that had the original varnish. Because now we're gonna work to just kind of blend these together. After I come down vertical like this, 
I will take the brush and go across horizontally too because I want to keep all of it, the brush marks and the movement of it going in a horizontal way. But this is just to make sure that we get it down in all those grooves. Do that, and now I'm gonna come through, just lightly brush it this way. Also get rid of those lines that create between the brush strokes. And there we go, another light coat. And I will let this cure again several hours and then I will go over it with one more coat. Okay, we're gonna come in with the final coat. So this will be the third coat that is going on and I am again gonna do it in the opposite direction initially, but we're gonna come from the bottom this time. And now you can see I dripped all over it. That's not a problem after you have this many coats on because I can smooth it out and I can go over an area again and again now. So I'm not too worried um, as I am very cautious with that first sealed layer that goes down so I don't move the pastel or work the pastel too much. So I'm just gonna come this way, really paying attention here around the edges of the paper is I want to make sure that that is sealed in there really well. And now I am going to go back and again, drag it through horizontally since that is how the paint and everything was applied. So that's really where the movement is. So I just really wanna make sure to come through and smooth all of this out to get a nice protective coat over the entire piece. Thank you so much for joining me as we reworked this piece I would love to hear what you think of the process. Did you like the original or is this new version um, more to your taste? Because it definitely is to mine. I love how it turned out. I'm really, really happy with it. So thank you again for joining me in the studio and I'll catch you next time. Bye.